Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Radio Show. The show is about transforming lives one story at a time. And I am so excited to have uh, yet another stellar individual on the line. The show is about conversations that matter. And we invite people from all walks of life to come and share their heart stories, their stories of upliftment and transformation. I'd like to introduce Counselor Charmaine Williams. She is the very first black woman elected to the Brampton City Council in 2018, and her beliefs, values, and courage to advocate for people are shaped by her professional and personal experiences. Now, prior to entering politics, she had a 19-year career as a certified multi-systemic therapist and behavioral consultant and counselor. And Charmaine has been a voice on behalf of families and children of all ages coping with domestic violence, mental illness, substance abuse, neglect, trauma, and other personal challenges. And we are very excited to have City Councilor Charmaine Williams. She is also a wife to Steve and the mother of five beautiful children. Thank you so much, uh, Councilor, for your time. How are you today? Oh, I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor. Oh, it's a pl- it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. Well, City Councilor um, Charmaine Williams, thank you. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit about your background leading up to what you're doing today? Wow. Um, yeah, that, you know, it's amazing when you've had a long career leading up to what you're doing now. There's just so much to cover. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know yeah, I think I've just been so blessed to be in a field where I've been able to work with many families and uh, been able to touch many lives. And it's a thankless job. And, uh-huh. um, you know, I just I feel so very honored to have done the work because it's really shaped the kind of person I am. Um, I've always been the, the kind of person to um, want to help people solve problems, um, but also really strive to understand where the person's coming from. Um, you know, uh, many have said that I'm quite insightful and, mm-hmm. um, you know, have a, a lot of empathy for mm-hmm. what families are going through. And, uh, and that's the goal for me is to really understand what it's like to experience the challenges that each family is experiencing when I'm working with them. Yeah, so over almost 20 years, um, I, I worked in children's mental health and uh, worked for a number of organizations like Children's Aid, Associated mm-hmm. Youth Services, Peel Children's Center, and WISAP, which is the substance abuse program. And uh, But before becoming elected, I worked for ROC, Reach Out Center for Kids in the Halton region. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, being able to go into homes and uh, help families who are suffering many challenges with mental health and and parents who are struggling to find creative and and healthy ways to parent their child, um, you know, it, it it's been it's been really great to do that work. And so for so long though, when it, you work in that field, you start to see um, the same scenario begin to repeat itself over and over again, either mm-hmm. in every different new family you come in contact with, or with the same family you're working with, they might end up coming back into the system and requiring support. And, you know, I've realized that oftentimes it's the way the system is set up. It's not as easy to navigate for families. Um, And they they hit the same barriers and the same roadblocks. So, you know, becoming a multi-systemic therapist, I, I really love that therapeutic modality because it really helps you understand why why a family is experiencing the problems that we're experiencing and helping families develop the skills to identify those barriers. Um, when they are able to identify the barriers, you, you almost have like a little roadmap on how to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's the work I was, had been doing for, for so long. And, um, you know, but because those systemic changes um, need to be made, you know, I start to realize when asking the questions and, and trying myself to figure out what's going on, it, it comes down to a political um, field, a political mm-hmm. realm, right? And you start to realize that some of the decisions that are being made by people in this, these political um, positions and power, they may not have the experience in the background that uh, many therapists who are on the front line working mm-hmm 
And you know what I mean? They don't quite grasp exactly what it is families are going through, and they're just making decisions based on budget, based on, you know, what what looks good (laughs) and what sounds good um, in the media and so on and so forth. So I, I said, you know, I guess the only way for me to really have a voice and be a voice for those who aren't able to speak for themselves, who aren't at the table, is to be at the table. Uh-huh. So that, yeah, you know, so that's why I ended up getting into politics. I had a, a good friend of mine who ran in, in um, a municipal election um, uh-huh. in Caledon, and she said to me, Charmaine, you can do this. And over many times, just because of my own stuff, I'm like, there's no way. That's just yeah. it's too difficult. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> we, get a, we stop ourselves from our own success sometimes. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Talk like, ourselves out of it. And, yeah, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We talk ourselves out of it, which is why I also encourage, always encourage people to go figure that out. Go to therapy. Figure out what is blocking you from you right. being successful, right? right? Right. And, yeah, so she's like, you, you got to do this. After telling myself no for so many time, so many years, I um, I had my I got pregnant with my last baby, baby number five, mm-hmm. and I loved the job I was working at with Rock as a behavioral consultant. But when I went off um, on that leave and I had Malcolm, I about six days later after having him, I had a brain hemorrhage. Oh it was my a gosh. massive Yeah, it was a massive brain hemorrhage, and it completely changed my life and everything and my family's life. I went went into the hospital because of a headache. And, you know, when you're just had a baby, and, and Nikki, I know you're a mom of three beautiful children, so <laughs> you know you. what it's like, right? Yeah. You come home yeah. and you're like, I still got to take care of the other kids, yeah. you know, keep some yeah. kind of semblance of order and, and normal life for them. And Mm -hmm. so I just kept going, and I passed the headache up as a a migraine and as hormonal. Um, But it just wouldn't subside. It didn't want to go away. And uh, so my husband, I said to him, I got to go into the hospital. And I I have to thank my mom and her background in nursing. You know, she's really helped me kind of be attuned to my own self and, you know, figure out when, when things are at that point where you really need to get some serious medical attention. And uh, so we went into the hospital, and thankfully, I was moved through the emergency um, department fairly quickly. I was given Mm -hmm. some medication because they treated me for a migraine. Mm. Uh, Out of a time lapse, I don't know how much time went by, but the medication started to wear off, I guess. And I just, it felt like I had bricks banging in my head. It was excruciating. Horrible. Yeah, and so I'm like, just picture being in the room, right? Because I told my husband, go home. The other kids are going to be there. Send my mom to come back to get me, you know, because, you know, my mom, oh, everything will be all right. Just, you know, mm-hmm, there's milk mm-hmm. in the fridge. You can feed Malcolm. I'll be good. Send my mom. She'll pick me up. So I'm in this room by myself, and it's dark, and just getting some relief. The meds start to wear off. My head felt like it was going to explode, and I'm calling out to a nurse or somebody saying, like, my head, I'm about to take off my shoe to throw at the door because mm. nobody was, could hear me. Mm-hmm, and a nurse mm-hmm. came in, and I'll never, I, I, I would love to meet who this nurse was again. Now, I could see mm-hmm. her face, but I don't know her name. And I just said, my head, my head, and then I blacked out. <gasps> oh, yeah, I blacked out completely. I woke up, I don't know how many Hours, minutes later, my mom was there and the emergency doctor said, you know, Ms. Williams, you've had a brain hemorrhage. We might have to take you to Trillium Hospital because they might have to do emergency surgery to relieve the pressure on your brain. Mm. Um, we're going to do everything we can. But, you know, Nikki, I felt really calm in that moment. Mm. And I felt calm. My mom was there and she was upset. But I felt calm and I just said to her, Mom, you know, I'm going to be okay. God is going to guide the surgeon's hand. Yes. I'm going to be yes. okay. Well, thankfully, and then after that, I was out again. <laughs> I woke up in the ICU some days later, and, uh, wow. yeah, I was told that they were able to regulate the pressure in, at Branson Civic Hospital, and, and but I'm not able, to, I couldn't see, I'm not able to walk, 
Um, it's going to take some time for you to get some your mobility back if you can. And um, at that point, I said, "Oh no, no! I'm I'm just had a baby. I am got four other kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? My uh-huh. baby, my son. I have my husband, my family. I'm I can't I can't be here. I need to get myself together. Right. So I just, you know went on that road to recovery and uh, one step at a time I was using a walker and I was in the hospital for a while and yeah you know I got back on my feet thank God and um, you know got home and but I had some more challenges and complications so I had to go back into the hospital and but it, it was it was overall just a journey but It was that life-changing moment that I said, what on earth am I Mm -hmm. holding myself back from? I almost was taken from this earth. God clearly has another plan for me, and I'm Mm -hmm. not going to sit back and, and, uh, you know, just sit here, right? So I, yeah, yeah, in the hospital, you have a lot of time to think Mm -hmm. (laughs) in between visits. So I I, I had... um, I was home and getting back on my feet, and we were approaching the election cycle. Um, uh-huh. We just finished the provincial election, and we're approaching the municipal election. Uh-huh. And that same good friend of mine again said, Charmaine, what's holding you back? Uh-huh. <laughs> I said, you know what? Nothing. I'm going to go for it. And you're I got clearance go from, yeah, the neurologist said you're good. You shouldn't have any... Um, concerns with another brain hemorrhage, you know, no aneurysms, no sign of aneurysms. Your veins look um, quite good. Mm-hmm. And I just said, okay, that this is my next chance. So I, I made some calls and I met with some people to figure out what exactly am I getting into. And mm-hmm. Nikki, man, you know what it's like. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> It was yeah. scary. I have a lot of people tell me, no, you're not going to do this. There's no way Mama uh-huh. Five is going to win the election. Uh-huh. But, uh-huh. yeah, but I, I just said, you know what, why why wouldn't I go for it? So I thankfully got uh, connected to some strong political um, movers and uh, who gave me some really great tips and um, I ended up working with a um, campaign manager, um, Rob Davis, who mm-hmm. is amazing at what he does, knows nice. so much. He was a city councillor in Toronto. And yes. I had some, yeah, a small but mighty team, and we put a campaign together. And it was all about talking about the things that really impacted us as residents and that was safety and road safety and that was gun violence because it was a crazy time at that summer we had many shootings in Branton and um, you know it what my message really resonated with the people and we knocked on doors every mm-hmm. single day every single day mm-hmm. and with all the naysayers, we kept pushing, and we, I, I can't believe it. I'm here today because of all of that hard work. Um, on October 22nd, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I won the election being the first black woman on city council. It was pretty wild. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And, and I, I can just imagine um, just the jubilation in your home. You know, oh, they, yeah. your your children, your husband, your family behind you. And and I'm sure there must have been people, Charmaine, even from your own camp, scratching their heads going, how does she do it? Because oh, I, yeah. I, you know, they're they're kind of the, the, the first ones too <laughs> from your inner circle saying, you yeah. know, I don't think you really can do this. But what a wonderful thing it is to show them mm-hmm. how it can be done. And, you know, and, and your story is yeah. just really remarkable that Thank look you. how far you've come and, and from your own inner strength and, and faith, you, you've mm. overcome amazing obstacles. So what, what more would hold you back than this wonderful right. opportunity you had? So, you know, kudos mm-hmm. to you for really just having um, a real, I would have to say, an incredible strength. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I, I, I take the strength from many others who come before me and uh you know especially being a black woman and seeing 
all of the obstacles that black women we've had to go through. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and many people just saying, you can't. Yes. You know, it's so easy for us to take that message, internalize it, and just believe it. it was right? Absolutely. And, yeah. Right, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. faith really has a lot to do with it for me too. Uh, I think, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer that God has a plan for every one of us. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you have to put yourself in the position to re- receive, um, receive the pushes that he gives you and have faith that the outcome that he puts in front of you is the outcome that he wants for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? And so and for me, it's like I, I, don't, I don't get too overwhelmed and stressed about things because I know, you know what, this is a part of the plan. If things mm-hmm. don't go, if I didn't win, I'd be disappointed. But I don't think it would have broken me um, because it, it would have just been God saying, no, no, not, not right now. You thought it was. And I'm glad you went for it because it taught you something, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's not right now, right? And so that's that's kind of how I I move through life now, just realizing Absolutely. that he has a plan. Absolutely, yeah, mm-hmm. I I realize that too. That delay is in denial. It just means yeah. that it's just not the right timing. And there's definitely a less a lesson in whatever um, moment that you're in, and just that's keep right. going. Just never give up. That's right. But now he has a big <laughs> plan. You know, Absolutely. he has big plans for each one of us. So Absolutely. don't be too upset yeah. when that one door closes. One another one will open for you. Absolutely, and do, and don't lean on your understanding because mm-hmm. you know it's it's uh, you don't know the mind of God. So That's it's, right. It's always just just hang in there and trust. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. So now you are here, um, mm-hmm. uh, October 2018. Uh, you are a city councilor for Ward 7 and 8, and that's mm-hmm. in Brampton, Ontario, for those listening outside of uh, Canada. Uh, tell us a little bit about your regular day. What's your, your I, I'm sure you don't have a 9 to 5. It's probably like a, a 8 to 9, or, or, <laughs> or it, it all depends on when you wake up and when you retire for the day. But uh, yeah. what's your kind of regular agenda looking like? Oh, my to? goodness. Well, I have to say that, you won't know what it's like until you're actually in it. And mm-hmm. I am more busy now than I have ever been. I, <laughs> and, you know, even though the work that I used to do was mentally draining, um, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, you're working, I was working with some pretty heavy-duty caseloads and, and with families that are going through some pretty heavy stuff, but you're able to separate yourself to some extent right. when you're doing that heavy-duty therapeutic work. But here, because you have to be so many things to so many people, mm-hmm. and and that's just the work. Never mind your home, yeah. Right. So it's a draining position, and I I I, I really do uh, honestly. It it's really changed the way I see politi- politics, and mm-hmm. um, you know those who are doing it well, they're really we're really working our butts off. Because you, you're answering to residents every day. You, we're getting calls and, and emails from residents saying, I've got this problem, I've got that problem. And, and your goal is to help work them through it and help connect them. So every day I, my schedule is pretty packed and I'm meeting with a number of different, you know, community members, um, organizers, you know, movers and shakers in the community who have really big plans that want to do things. But then there's also understanding the the workings of council and mm-hmm. all of the legal um, pieces that are so important to, you know, um, council meetings and moving motions and how to actually accomplish things at that table and mm-hmm. how to navigate the different personalities at the table. Because, mm-hmm. you know, everyone um, at this in politics has their own political motivations. And if it doesn't align with your political motivations, then, you know, you could face many different roadblocks. Um, and that's why I say I'm so thankful I have, you know, my faith in and also my experience to, to not really internalize, um, you know, to internalize negativity because I realize there's so much greater out there than the, the little silly political um, 
conflicts. But, mm-hmm. you know, you, you really have to, there's so many different personalities that you have to navigate and understanding how to pre- present different ideas on a table that's going to be received because you're one vote out of 11. And if you mm-hmm. can't get everybody on side to vote in favor of something you're putting forward, it could be amazing. It could be mm-hmm. amazing, but if they're not going to vote for it, it's not going to go. Right. So, you know, there's, it's been a steep learning curve for me. Um, every Wednesday is a council meeting. Every other mm-hmm. Monday is a planning meeting, and we sit mm-hmm. on those committees. I also have committees that I sit on that are city-led. So I'm on the age-friendly committee. I'm on the library board. I'm on the um, seniors committee. I'm on the, you know what I mean, um, the school safety traffic um, school traffic and safety advisory committee and uh-huh. you meet um, every month and then you've got reports to read and you know so there's a lot of um, work that you sit down and you have to read through everything but then there's also being out in the public because people want to see you sure and you want to show that you're engaged and you're, mm-hmm. you're you know th- where the people are and you're there listening and you know so there's many different levels and layers to this job and this work where you really need a good team around you to help organize yourself and and uh, help you respond to emails. And we, we get a lot coming in, so sometimes mm-hmm. I, I have to apologize profusely to people if we haven't heard if they haven't yes. heard from me in a few weeks. And I, and right. it's not intentional, but you know sometimes when you get in like 50 emails a day, you might miss the one that comes in the, around 11 o'clock when you're taking a break or something. <laughs> and, yes. and you just yes. and it gets missed, but mm-hmm. you know it's it's never intentional. But you know, so the whole goal is to really help make Brampton a healthy um, place to work, live, and play. And mm-hmm. so, making sure that there are jobs and it's safe, and there are events and activities for the community to engage in. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And and I've seen how um, incredible. Uh, Brownton, Brampton uh, Mayor uh, Patrick Brown and the councillors have been so responsive to the COVID-19 um, mm. pandemic, and I know that you must be, um, you must have a lot of questions coming in, and people are very concerned about their mm. livelihood, um, you know, where they're living, um, you know, uh, income being cut off because of, you know, mm. shortage of work or uh, closures. So. Um, what type of message of hope can you offer the listeners now? I mean, I know that you answer um, strategic questions, but um, on an inspira- inspirational level, what mm. would you advise people in this very trying time? You know, I, I never want to dismiss the way people are feeling right now. Mm-hmm, and people mm-hmm. are feeling scared. They are feeling very anxious about, you know, their business, their work, um, about change. Change is a difficult thing to go through, Um, especially when you don't have a good um, compass to navigate. This is the first pandemic we've ever had to deal with in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So, you know, you definitely can look at events from the past to see how they come out, which is why I want to encourage people to always hold in their minds that this too shall pass and we will come out. You know, um, Right now, I I keep thinking of cognitive behavioral therapy. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, your 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 thoughts become your feelings, and, and your feelings become your actions. Right. So, right. Right. you know, if you keep thinking and and being hopeful and thinking that we are going to get through this, you're going to feel hopeful. You're sure. going to feel encouraged, and you will feel maybe even motivated to see this as an opportunity. And then you'll start acting in that way. And you'll get up in the morning. You'll follow a schedule. You'll still go for a walk. You'll find different creative ways to meet with people. So keep thinking that this too shall pass and mm-hmm. keep being, feeling hopeful that we will get through this. You know, and access the tools that are out there you know, get, there, Zoom is a great way to connect with people. Um, mm-hmm. You know, even at the city of Brampton, we have um, four task force, task forces that we're working on. Um, there is a social supports task force for those who are in need of food and need in need of resources. We have the senior support task force 
for seniors um, to be connected. We have the Economic Support Task Force for all of those who are in business and have businesses and worried about what's going to happen with their business, if they're going to be able to stay open. A great link to, to connect with the team there because there are, right now, people can start applying for um, small grants and business loans and mm-hmm. um, ways to help keep their business afloat. And then yes. we have the Youth Support Task Force, and that's the task force that I co-lead with Councillor Harkirit Singh. And mm-hmm. we are focusing on our young people, our youth, and uh, you know, in, and our parents of young of kids, and encouraging them to, um, you know, look at the resources we have. If you're struggling mentally, there are great mental health organizations that you can get connected connected with. We also have fun um, challenges online that family and people can participate in. Just an, another cute, unique way for us to engage and be connected and. Uh, and so there, there are resources, there are opportunities for us to keep being hopeful and mm. know that this too shall pass, you know? Good, excellent. Well, from what I've um, heard you say, uh, Counselor, is that, you know, people should really um, focus on the present and also to understand that what they think is what they'll attract, right? And then right. how you think will um, uh, consequently, uh, you know, will affect your behavior. So you really okay. want to keep in a positive uh, mindset and also to look for uh, ways to um, get help if you need it. There's no shame in asking for help. Uh, that's None. what I've taught myself and, and what I teach right. others. Um, so uh, get the help and uh, delegate if you can't do it all by yourself. So that's this is right. um, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so I just wanted to close by uh, saying that I really do appreciate uh, you taking the time to share a little bit about yourself. I've learned um, so much more, and I have uh, even more respect for who you are and what you do. And mm-hmm. I know that there are listeners who want to reach out to you. So, Counselor, how can people contact you, either by phone, email, or website? Oh, my goodness, so all, all three. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> by phone, you can call my office at 905-874-2671. Uh, my email is charmaine.williams at brampton.ca. I'm also on social media um, on Instagram at charmama5, and that is at C-H-A-R-M-O-M-O-F number five. And I want to encourage everybody to, you know, get on there, seek me out, and uh, I'm going to be, um, we're also going to be talking about something that's really important to all of Ontario and Canada, and especially in Brampton. We have a large number of foreign trained um, Canadian qualified doctors um, and our hospital system, we need more doctors, especially during mm-hmm. this pandemic. You know, Canada has about 2.4 do- uh, doctors per thousand people. It- wow. Italy has 4.1 doctors per thousand people, and they are struggling. So I just mm-hmm. cannot imagine what we will be going through. Um, and so what I'm encouraging is for um, legislation to change and to allow t- more doctors who have all of the qualifications who've gone through the testing here in Canada. Mm -hmm. Um, They just need to be put to work. So if people want to sign the petition at moredoctorsnow.ca, they Mm. can go do that there. And uh, it's another great way to get connected with me. Volunteering, um, helping people who who are maybe elderly, who need to um, get grocery supplies, but they can't get out. Maybe they can. Is is there an opportunity there for people to volunteer for that kind of service as well? Sure. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you mentioned that. So we, if people want to volunteer through the city, um, go to COVID19 Brampton dot at Brampton dot ca. Um, send an email. Um, so it's uh, COVID19 Brampton at Brampton dot ca. Send an email there with what your um, strengths are, what you want to do, and one of our staff will reach out to you and get you connected to an organization, to anything that you want to help volunteer. This is a great time for all of us in the city to come together, connect with your neighbors, and uh, get engaged, get involved, because we all are going to be stronger when we work together and uh, help each other, lift each other up. 
you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Social distance doesn't mean that you have to take away the social away from it. We can just uh, stay connected, either social That's media uh, or just, yes. you know, keep the two meters apart but still be around for each other. And I thank you so much for your time. And one last thing, a counselor, can you um, give us any shout-outs or people that you want to uh, mention who've been uh, really been um, formidable on your team? Yeah. Been very you know, helpful over the little while? I, I have to shout out my, my pastor, um, <laughs> Father David at St. Joseph of Nazareth Anglican Church. Such a rock, such a support. I need to shout out Rob Davis. He's been such a strong um, support and a mastermind when it comes to getting things that are in this brain of mine out to the the community. Um, Cindy Lewis, who is a wonderful staff. She has been so great. She works with me. Mm -hmm. And Julie um, Barrett is another staff who works with me. Um, I'm so thankful for all of them and their support. My parents, my kids, Malcolm. Naomi, Lily, Violet, and Malik, and and my husband, Steve Bailey. And the list can go on because I could say my parents <laughs> and my sister and everybody, but I'm just so thankful for all of the support that I've had over the years. And lastly, give a shout-out to Mayor Brown. He's doing a great job, especially during this pandemic, and helping us mm-hmm. really connect with all of our residents and, uh, you know, make sure everyone comes out of this. On the other side, you know, maybe a little bit, uh, with our hair needs to be cut and our nails are grown out, but at least we're getting out of this. <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to emerge on the other side <laughs> very soon. I'm Absolutely. very hopeful about that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, I definitely have to go for a hair color. But uh, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> you're you're uh, you're been uh, really uh, wonderful. Uh, we've appreciated your pearls of wisdom, and uh, I really hope for all the best for you. For uh, uh, are you are you thinking of the next election? You're going to run again uh, in two years. Yeah, you know what I. I don't think the political world is finished with me yet. Um, unless <laughs> God has a different plan, but I, I, I don't feel like I'm finished with the political world, and uh, I look forward to being here in Brampton again for sure. But Nikki, I have to say thank you so much. You know, you reached out to me as well, and we were able to connect. And you're just a wealth of wisdom as well. Thank and you. I, I, I feel very it. inspired by everything you do and you've done. And I, I just want to say thank you for what you're doing for all of us in our community. Oh, it's all a pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, you've been listening to the Nikki Clark Radio Show with our very special guest, City Councilor Charmaine Williams from Brampton. Uh, Please reach out to her on social media and see all the wonderful things that she's doing. All right. Well, thank you again, Uh, Counselor. Stay strong, stay safe, and looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye for now. Bye now.